What is a system and how does it work? A system is a set of interrelated and interdependent parts that forms a complex whole. A system is more than the sum of the individual parts. The parts are working together. System approach is a way of thinking that helps to study and understand complex issues about the environment, nature, economics, society, and others. System boundaries can be obvious or very often difficult to define because they are interconnected systems and also subsystems. Could be at any scale. An atom is a system and the whole universe is a system too. There are different types of systems. Most systems are open systems. For example, they have external interactions in the form of energy, matter or information. A simple example is a pot with a meal in it being cooked. The pot allows for the transfer of matter. You can put salt or other spices in it. Or of energy. It gives off steam while the meal is being cooked. What about a closed system? This is a system that exchanges only energy with its surroundings but does not exchange matter. Taking the same example with the pot, if you put a lid on top of it, you won't be able to add any more spices or matter, but energy transfer would still be possible. So when further heating the pot would still produce steam inside and even small water drops would form on the inner side of the lid. Isolated systems exchange neither energy nor matter nor information with their environment. Actually, completely isolated systems do not freely occur in nature or even in lab conditions. They are only hypothetical. Even if you assume that a thermos is an isolated system because it keeps the tea inside hot and it has a lid, so no matter or energy can escape or enter. It can be isolated for only for a limited amount of time because eventually the tea inside will cool down. What is a feedback loop? A system feeds back into itself when its outflows of energy, matter or information enter back into it as inflows. A simplified example from climate science is the world's climate system in which warmer temperatures lead to less snowfall and melting of the ice, which in turn leads to more sunlight being absorbed by land and sea, which leads to temperatures rising even more. It is important to realize that there are two types of feedback loops, whose names can be a little bit misleading. Positive or reinforcing feedback loops imply a process where a change within the system is reinforced by internal or external factors leading to exponentially more change. For example, when forest is removed to build roads, logging companies and people may use the roads to cut even more trees to produce timber or build houses, leading to even more forest loss. In an ecosystem context, a positive feedback is often not good for the ecosystem because life depends on a delicate balance. Negative or balancing feedback loops often promote internal self-regulation of a system. For example, when human skin is exposed to heat, sweat is produced which cools the skin down. Negative feedback also drives prices in markets. If a product becomes too expensive, people stop buying it, which may motivate the seller to reduce the price.